Hey now, so we are going to talk about one of probably the first impossible autographs ever of the Baseball Hall of Fame. There's a couple of them. This is the first one, and that's John Clarkson. Uh, probably most of you watching this have never heard of John Clarkson. He died at age 47 in 1909. Uh, he was in an insane asylum, believe it or not, for quite some time before he passed away. Uh, so we talked about Chesbro a while back being the last 40 game winner. Clarkson back in, I wrote this down, 1885, won 53 games in a season. Like, no one's going to win half that anymore, probably ever again. Uh, he won 328 games in his lifetime, a lifetime 2.81 ERA. No question he's a Hall of Famer. He was elected by the Veterans Committee in 1963. The problem is, it's just an impossible autograph. So, I in my lifetime, I've seen maybe, and I want to use the keyword, maybe one real autograph and let's talk about that possible one real autograph right now and i even have a pretty good picture of it which is believe it or not wasn't that easy so here it is this is the only john clarkson autograph now i know that ron k also talks about one in on the halls of shame website which was actually a pretty good website i really did enjoy it but it's been shut down for various reasons, including some legal reasons. So the John Clarkson autograph you see right here was acquired by, God, if I had like a mentor and a longtime collector, uh, he's the owner or was the owner of this autograph. He also owned the Eddie Joss autograph known in Ron Kay's book. He also owned uh, Joe Jackson's driver's license. So this guy, if there was a chance of a good autograph being real, he got it when he did. And I actually wrote him and I asked him about the history of this autograph. And he wrote me back this. I'm going to read this to you verbatim. I purchased the John Clarkson in 1994 from MVP Autographs of Doug Averett, who, again, longtime collector. I don't even know if Doug's still alive anymore. Uh, he may be. But uh, I knew Doug well and did purchase items from him at times. The provenance, as I recall, was from Bill Zika's collection as Bill was looking to sell his collection over time, beginning in the early 1990s. My only question to Doug at the time was how long had Bill had it and the best of the memory notes that he owned it from the 1950s, 1960s, so around that time. I was skeptical of buying it, but since it was a check and had a bank stamp and stamped bank date under the endorsement, I bought it. And you look at this, you could see the endorsement of 1888 below here. Anyways, Clarkson, in all my years of collecting, I've never seen another Clarkson except for Coach's Quarter. Ha ha. From what I understand is that Zekas would send pictures or copies of his autographs freely to people at their request without concern for people using them as templates for forgeries. I know this because as a kid, I would write Zekas and he sent me copies of stuff. I also heard that Zekas unknowingly was the source material for forgeries because of this. I showed the Clarkson to Jim Stinson when I was selling parts of my collection a few years ago, and he couldn't say if it was good or not because of the lack of exemplars. The only other person I've seen is illustrated in Ron's first book that he lists as undated signature with description removed from the Halls of Shame website. Jim felt my Clarkson has very, very good chance of being the real deal on Clarkson because it is an endorsement check with a bank stamp and a bank stamp date with a, quote, useful, non-impaired signature. PSA, when we asked before submitting, told us they won't authenticate the Clarkson because it's not a full check. The same issue Jim and I had with them regarding my blah, 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 blah. I'm going to skip all this. They would not say yes or no to authenticity on them, even though two of their authenticators probably said both of these were more likely good in a private opinion to Jim. Keating in the late 1990s was interested in this Clarkson and buying or trading for it. But at that time, of course, I wasn't interested. So let's go back here. That's about it. So, I mean, you're not buying a John Clarkson autograph, my guess. I don't know if, like I said, this collector still has this autograph or not. No one's even 100% sure if this is 100% real or not. No one has ever seen an autograph 100% sure of John Clarkson. Uh, like I said before, you go on PSA's database, they have nothing. So it's like one of the great mysteries of the Hall of Fame. Because, again, like he lived in Michigan, a lot of collectors or longtime hobbyists, including Ron, have tried to find his lineage to see he owned a, a cigar store about an hour north of here. Maybe there was a deed around or something like that. Nothing. He's like a ghost when it comes to Hall of Fame autographs. So so the opposite of ghosts is next, and that's Ty Cobb. Uh, I'm going to have to spend some time going over Ty Cobb. 
probably next to Ruth or Gehrig, one of the most forged autographs in the Hall of Fame. So we'll look at it next time. But until then, as always, keep collecting.